Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. My name is Brinton, and last time we took on the Lord of the Inferno, Ifrit himself, as we came to a peaceful conclusion of the investigation that we made in Camp Drybone. So one of the main primal threats, at least here in Thanalan, have been extinguished and the citizens of Old Dock can rest peacefully in their beds. This time, I didn't quite exactly get a chance to plan what I wanted to do in between last week and what I wanted to do this week. Um, I know for sure I wanted to do the main scenario quest, which is exactly what I planned on doing. And so, um, I know there are specific things I want to get done with the main scenario quest today. Uh, that will then be able to help us move forward with a couple of feature quests that I wanted to do next. So we'll just go ahead and go ahead and start focusing on that. Another thing that I wanted to show you before we get going is that I took care of these Yarzon scavengers here in Western Thanaland since we're close to the footfalls. Um, a lot of these hunts that we will be doing. Um, are in Lenosha and the Black Shroud, so the areas that surround Limza, Lominza, and Gridania. Um, once you get to about rank 3 of your class hunting log, some of these guys don't always... Oh! The Laughing Toad is also in the footfalls. I guess we're just gonna have to make our way out here on camera because I wanted to take care of what was close by off camera, which, you, which I wanted to show you. Um, but a lot of these are in... Gridania, oh, Southern Fanalan. I think we're going to make making our way out there eventually. But anyway, I just want to let you know I'm not neglecting my hunting log. It's just I haven't really had a chance to do much with it lately. Uh, but we will go out and take care of the Laughing Toad after we have spoken to Minfilia and picked up a hero in the making. Minfilia is wearing a wry smile. Might that have something to do with your newfound fame? Until not so very long ago, you were but one of many adventurers seeking to make their way in Eorzea. Before your character and courage were raised to the esteemed post of Envoy, therefore you traveled the realm, aiding those in need without the thought of reward conforming to Thancred and that the Scions would benefit from your aid, and no sooner had you joined us, you personally bested the primal Ifrit. You have achieved a great deal in a short time, and won fame in so doing. Alas, fame does not come without a price, as you will soon discover. We have guest scout, or rather, you have guests. Big pardons. Ah, Lady Menphilia, radiant as always. I am given to understand that the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have but recently welcomed a new hero into their midst. I am here on behalf of the Maelstrom, Grand Company of Limza Lominza, to offer said hero a place of honor within our ranks. As you can see, Scout, your recent exploits have gathered you the attentions of the Grand Companies of Eorzea. Each organization could have Ifrit's bane for its own. To this end, all three have sent officers to court you. They would not ordinarily go to such lengths to enlist a new recruit. That they have is evidence of their high regard for you. I find myself wondering how word of Scout's deeds spread so quickly that the immortal flames should know if his triumph is to be expected. But what of the other grand companies? Yeep! Your reputation precedes you, Master Alder. Tis no ordinary man who can face a primal and emerge the victor. The Order of the Twin Otter 
twin adder has need of valiant men such as you. Join our strength to yours, friend, and together let us ensure the peace ever reigns over to Twelve's Wood. What a pleasure it is to finally meet you, Mr. Alder. My comrades speak of you with the speak of you in the most glowing terms. Why, even before you aided us against the Almaja and their dead prim dread primal, yours was already a respected name in Olda. Our people know you and love you as well. A man of your talent belongs with the immortal flames. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us secure the prosperous future of Olda. The Admiral was not exaggerating when she said you have the look of a hero. Full often does she speak of you, friend. It is yours... It is only natural that we should want want for you the maelstrom. Join your strength to ours, and together let us see the grand vessel of Linza Lamenza to the shores of glory. Lady Menphilia. Very well. Though I am quite sure you need no reminding, mayhap a brief summary of the situation would help to clarify your thoughts on the matter. As you know, the Grand Companies are all-encompassing organizations empowered to call upon the martial, economic, and technological resources of their respective city-states in times of strife. There are presently three such organizations in Eorzea, the Maelstrom of Limsa Lomenza, the Order to Twin Adder and Gridania, and the Immortal Flames of Oldah. Serving a grand company means serving the nation to which it belongs. You will be charged with its defense and tasked with advancing its cause. In return for your faithful service, you will be furnished with various rewards, some of which may well prove useful to you in your other endeavors. If you, um, if you are agonizing over which of the grand companies best deserves your loyalty, be at ease. The commitment you make may make this day need not be permanent. Should you wish to shift your allegiance at a later date, you are entitled to do so, and yet I can see that it is no small choice you face. Ah, a thought occurs to me. You will, of course, recall the three city-states are planning to hold remembrance services. Well, as part of the proceedings, I am given to understand that the leader of each grand company will deliver an address. Hearing these addresses ought to help you make an informed decision. What say you, my dear officers? A fine suggestion. You are as wise as you are beautiful, my lady. Very well. Let's scout here our leader speak, then return here with his decision. We eagerly await your answer. I know full well that the adventurers are by their natures a liberty-loving breed, and not best suited to the discipline of military service, but I strongly urge you to join a grand company nonetheless. While the promise of reward is enticing in itself, it is not the only benefit. You are possessed of great power, Scout, and with it you are capable of doing untold good. Yet know the great power is not wont to attract attention. Not all of it is friendly. There will be those who wish to ill you, and you must needs be on the lookout for them. Yet, however vigilant you are, you are but one man in the midst of a grand company. However, you will be one man amongst many, a friend amongst friends. Your achievements will be shared, and so will you, the danger. I can think of no better arrangement. Of course, joining one organization need not mean leaving the other. I hope we can continue to rely upon your aid. The Twelve know that we will have need of it in the days ahead. The Grand Companies seek to protect their own nations. We Saiyans, on the other hand, seek to preserve the future of Eorzea as a whole. Similar, yet not quite the same. Now then, I expect you will have field more often in the future. As such, I would you carry this Link Pearl with you at, at all times. It will allow you to stay in touch regardless of location. Eorzea is changing, Scout, and you have the power to help shape it anew. 
None can say what the morrow will bring, but so long as we believe in ourselves, there is naught we cannot achieve. Now it is time we make ready for your journey. Before you depart, be sure to speak to Tataru. She will appraise you as to where and when the remembrance services are due to take place. Uh, all right. Um, I was actually wondering for a while when we were going to watch the cutscenes for those remembrance services. Um, because I was talking to my husband. Yeah, exit to Vesper Bay. I was talking to my husband and I was like, I think they took like three very long cutscenes out of the game. And they didn't. We are approaching them. Um, not only did we get to talk about the Remembrance Services when we were acting as Envoy, but we essentially now get to watch them. And like I said, they're very long cutscenes, and I didn't think they were going to pop up now. Ugh. I'm going to go ahead and talk to Tataru and, Tataru and try and figure out what we're going to do here. I, um... I'm sorry about all the attention you're getting, Scout. I might have sung your praises a little too loudly. And often. To a few too many people. <laughs> Next time, I'll be sure to hold my tongue. Literally, if necessary. Anyway, I expect you want to know where and when the Remembrance Services are taking place. If all goes to plan, Gridania's Grand Company, the Twin, Order to Twin Otter, will hold the first of the three services. The Elder Seed Seer, Kane Sena, will deliver her address at Miketo's Amphitheater. I should probably mention at this point that due to the organizational challenges involving the assembly of all involved parties, it's possible that the order of the services might change. Still, there's not much we can do about that, so make Gridania your first port of call. Next, you'll need to go to Ulda, where Flame General Raban Alden will be addressing the masses of the Royal Promenade. Oh, and it's rumored there's to be a special guest. How exciting. Last but not least, you must make your way to the state room of Limza Lomenza, while Maelstrom Chief Admiral Merylbib um, Boisfin will be giving her address. The room is accessible via the Admiral's lift. Identify yourself to the sentry, uh, Vanathale, and he will admit you. Got all that? Well, off you go then. I hope you found the Remembrance Services suitably educational. I suggest visiting the city-states in my prescribed order, though with your record of impeccable timing and luck, the schedule may well change in favor of your preferred travel plans. Farewell. All right. So and now we can go in whatever order that we want. I will actually go into order that Tataru suggested. Um, even though we are in Thanalan um, right now. But uh, anyway, uh, as I'm making my way over to take out those Laughing Toads, uh, like I said, we have three very long cutscenes ahead of us. Um, something that I know for a fact we will not be able to do in one episode, it may take a couple of... It may literally take a couple ep of episodes to do. Um, one thing that just came to mind is maybe doing one cutscene per episode. So after we take out these Laughing Toads, um, there's going to be actually a couple of other things that I'm going to pick up and do while we're here in Thanaland real quick, and then we'll head over and attend the ser Remembrance Service in Gridania. No, nope, I don't want to fight you. Go away. Um, and then we'll probably call it an episode there, and then next week we'll do old Dawes, and then the week following that we will do... what's it called? There's the Laughing Toad. My gosh, so many of these scavengers are just attacking me like crazy. I can't attack all of them at once, I'm gonna die. Um, and then finally we will do the one in Limza Lomenza. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm literally gonna die. I need to zoom out a little bit here. I mean, I do need to take out two Laughing Toads, so I guess this is helpful. Ooh. Concentrating because this is not going to be easy.
go ahead and build up my mana here. There we go. Oh, I gotta kill four of them? Oh, good lord. Okay. Well, let's keep going then. I thought I only had to get two, so that was... Um, not unintentional. What am I trying to say here? Unexpected. Okay. Oh, cool. I'll go over here so I can build up my mana with this dude. Now let's get a, a thunder cast on him. Okay, this did not turn out as bad as it was looking at initially. Okay, there we go. Let's see if there are any more in Thanalan while we're in Thanalan before we head out. Well, I know there's some... Yeah, I'm not going to go to southern Thanalan, Thanalan right now. Eastern Thanalan. Wilwick Wood. Have I been to Eastern Thanalan? Central. I don't think I've been to Eastern Thanalan. Oh yeah, I've been to Eastern Thanalan. It's in the Drybone area. Maybe not right now. Because I'm going to guess that that is... What's that? Thaumaturge 27. Yeah, that's going to be a little higher level than me. I don't think I'm going to deal with that right now. Same to... Oh, this one's in Southern southern Fandaland anyway. Um, where I wanted to go next real fast is back to Blackbrush Station. Because I wanted to go back and speak with um, that goblin who taught us about the materia melding. There are some feature quests there that I want to complete very quickly, and then we will head our way over to Gridania. So I believe Bonfire is just up and around this corner. So we'll just go over there super quick and take care of, um, well, take care of those feature quests before we, before we watch one of the three very long cutscenes. Luckily for me though, they're all voice casted. So there's all talking. I literally don't have to speak a word, which will be very nice. Okay, so it looks like we got two of them. Let's talk to Kokosamu first. Marvelously Immutable Materia. Riddle me this, friend. Have you, have you ever found yourself in an unfortunate situation where your pockets were near to burst in with all manner of materia, save for the sorts you wanted the most? Well, I have, I tell you, and it, um, it felt like I wrought a sack full of fishing poles to a gold man. Now I ask ye, what if there were a way to melt down a couple of pieces of materia that weren't availing you not, uh, and mold them into a shiny new piece that uh, Nyfema willin might, uh, just might strike your fancy? This most handy procedure is, call, is something we like to call shifty making. Rather, that's what Master Mutamix calls it. Myself, I've coined the term transmutation, which I'm hoping might find favor with adventurers like yourself. How does it work, you ask? I could tell you, but why ask the student when you can learn from the master? You'll find Mutamix right over there, likely jumping out of his boots looking to trade tongue flaps about his discovery. And I'm going to pick up this one over here as well. Forging the spirit. Um, what would you say if I told you that an inanimate object can possess a soul? They can, believe it or not. Although the soul in question is not their own, but that of their owner. Through faithful, faithful service to arms and armor that we can use come to hold our spiritual energy. Thus we do form a spirit bond with them. Such items can be converted into materia, and special kinds of crystal can be attached to gear to enhance its properties. I am well versed in the ways of materia conversion. If you listen to more about the process, I would be my pleasure to teach you. Okay, I'm going to finish with him first. Are you ready to commence your learning? Good. 
As you will have gathered by now, materia is a crystallized form of one's spiritual energy. As this energy is derived from the individual psyche, a, a volatile beast in the beast of times, a degree of variance is, be, is to be expected in its production. In practice, this means you, that you won't know the exact properties of the stone until you cradle it in your hand. Now, materia won't grant you much of anything on its own. Its power must be tapped, see, and this is achieved by melding it into gear. Know, though, that it takes the deft hands of a craftsman to melt materia. You can always seek others to attach materia on your behalf, but if it, but if you would sooner do it yourself, I recommend you speak to Faux uh, Pass. Melding is her field of expertise. If you wish to remove materia from an item, highlight its icon and then select Remove Materia. There is a chance that the materia will be salvaged. And complete. So creating materia, you can now convert items into materia. Materia created from one piece of gear can be affixed to another, improving its attributes. To convert an item into materia, you must first have create you must first have created a spirit bond with it by using the piece repeatedly in battle, crafting or gathering. Once the item spirit bond reaches 100, you will be able to convert from this list of available subcommands. Once an item is converted into materia, it can never be restored. Affixing materia to an item can be done by, dis by a disciple of hand with the proper training, or by speaking with materia melda NPCs. Should you wish to remove materia, you do may do so by highlighting it and selecting remo remove materia. So much like we did with Menthelia's, um, why do you have a red one? Uh, much like we did much like Munimix did with Menphelia's dagger, we can do that very much with our own gear. Um, we don't really have any materia right now, and honestly, melding materia to your gear is more for endgame content with raid gear, uh, something that we won't even talk about probably for months to come. Um, because I'll let you know when we're in endgame content, and we're definitely not in endgame content. We won't be in endgame content for probably another 25 levels. Um, so, anywho, <laughs> let's go ahead and finish up Marvelously Immutable Materia with Mutamix and make our way on over to Gridania. Uplander seeks knowing of shifty making, yes? Then Uplander should make open ears to tum flaps of Mutamix. Process of shifty making is of big help use. First, be taking five need not materia, yes? Milty mix this one, milty mix that one, squeeze and squash, then big eyes. Five Nina are reborn as a shiny new. But shifty making is not simple, but simple like crafty making. No wings of shifty making are much and many in Uplander's brain case, though big for Uplander is small. Uplander need not be making worry face. If Uplander has many need not materia, bring them to tent ring. Mutamix will shifty make for Uplander. Mutamix will perform materia transmutation for you at any time, free of charge. Bring the goblin five pieces of unwanted materia and he will transmute them into a single new piece to use as you see fit. That said, materia transmutation remains an inact science. As for what matter materia will emerge each time Mutamix works his wonders, not even a goblin genius himself can say. So, wheat. I want to figure out why... Viking in the spirit. Oh, okay. So this is one that I won't be able to unlock because I will not pursue a Disciple of the Hand or Disciple of the Land uh, class. So this can be unlocked if you were to become a carpenter, etc., miner, etc. Um, I really enjoy botanist, by the way. I have like a level 67 botanist on my main character. So if that helps you want to decide what you want to do, uh, the Botanist Guild can be found in Gridania, which actually is a nice little segue because off to Gridania we, oops, that's the wrong one. Off to Rega Gridania we go. I'll see you guys there. All right, my lovelies, here we are at the Miketo Amphitheater. Um, and this music is very nice. It's the gold saucer if you recognize it. But anyway, here is our destination. I'm going to go ahead and kick back and make sure that the 
um, dialogue continues moving forward and I will speak in when it is necessary, uh, but let us go and participate in the Remembrance Service services here in Gridania. were once strangers in the Twelves' Wood. Fearful of the Green Wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the Earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the Elementals, and were granted a place beneath the vows. So it was that Bradania was born, some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hure and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity, and blessed by the light of the Matri, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. with the will of the elementals we have embraced a life of peace alas our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves nor for us though we gridanians have no love for war we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the twelves wood when the Garlean Empire brought its war of conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartolan. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the Calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixil have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease, and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. Time was a man could not bloody itself fear. On this day, five years ago, countless Aeorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. 
please join with me in honoring their memory. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? The destruction wrought by the Calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder Standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children! The woods will be done. It's up to us to protect the forest. All the elementals! If you'll permit me, I'll be now. And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. The Gridanians are unfortunate enough to have to contend with two beast tribes. The Ixal are unquestionably the more troublesome, being of a naturally warlike disposition, and want to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. The Sylphs, by contrast, are peaceful in nature, being mischievous rather than malevolent. Um, yeah, malevolent and have long been on friendly terms with the Gridanians, until recently at least. At last he have grown aloof, a change observed at roughly the time they summoned their primal Ramu. The Gridanians have no love for war, and they consider open conflict at last resort. Though they clash with the Ixal ever more regularly, you may be assured that they do so in self-defense. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty, though one wonders how long it will be before it is broken. The Twelve's Wood was grievously wounded during the Calamity, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. The people are hopeful that restoring the wood, and thereby the power of the elements, will put an end to their woes. Yet, how long will that take? Centuries, I'd wager. Meanwhile, the Ixal will continue their incursions, spurred by, spurred on by Garuda and her insatiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gridanians like it or not, sooner or later it will come to an all-out war, and when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How valuable might the aid of a capable adventurer prove to them?
interesting, interesting, interesting. Just so you guys know, just a fun little fact if you didn't already notice it before, um, Alphano and Alizé were those two youngins that were sitting on our carriage in the very first major cutscene in the very first episode. We will actually be seeing quite a bit of them as our adventure continues forward. Next time on Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, we will see what other little feature quests we can pick up on our way and complete before we go to the Remembrance Services at the Royal Promenade in Olda. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can be notified of the next week's episode. Thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you guys next week for more Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. And I will see you all then. Bye!